to the leader of the opposition, Rishi Sunak. Yeah. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And can I join with the Prime Minister in paying tribute to the Grenfell community? And we're going to rightly discuss that important issue shortly after PMQs. Um, can I also join him in congratulating our record-breaking Olympians and Paralympians yeah. on everything that they have achieved? And lastly, could I just pay tribute to the hard work, bravery and dedication of our police? This summer, in challenging circumstances, they served our communities commendably and kept us all safe. Yeah. Now, Mr Speaker, government is about making choices, and the new Prime Minister has made a choice. He has chosen to take the winter fuel allowance away from low-income pensioners and give that money to certain unionised workforces in inflation-busting pay rises. So can I just ask the Prime Minister, why did he choose train drivers over Britain's vulnerable pensioners? Yeah. Mr Speaker, this government was elected to clear up the mess left by the party office and to bring about the change that the country desperately needs. Our first job was to audit the books, and what we found was a £22 billion black hole. Oh, it's no good them complaining. Richard Hughes, the chair of the OBR, was very clear. He described it as one of the largest year over overspends against forecast outside of the pandemic. His words. So we've had to take tough decisions to stabilise the economy and repair the damage, including targeting winter fuel payments whilst protecting pensioners. 800,000 pensioners are not taking up pension credit. We intend to turn that around. We're going to align housing benefit and pension credit, something the previous government deferred year after year after year. And because of our commitment to the triple lock, Pensions are projected to increase by over £1,000 in the next five years. Rishi yeah. well, Sunak. Mr. Speaker, the, the Prime Minister also inherited inflation back at target, yeah. interest rates being cut, yeah. unemployment low, and indeed the fastest growing economy in the G7, yeah. Mr. Speaker. But that's, but that's not the point, because the Prime Minister now has to start taking responsibility for his own decision. Yes. And if, as he says, the public finance is a priority, it was his decision, and his decision alone, to award a train driver on £65,000 a pay rise of almost £10,000. And it was also his decision that a pensioner living on just £13,000 will have their winter fuel allowance removed. So can the Prime Minister explain to Britain's low-income pensioners why he has taken money away from them whilst at the same time given more money to highly paid train drivers? Well, Mr Speaker, we spent the whole election with him trying to tell the country that everything was fine, and this is the result they got. A massive mandate on this side to change the country. And if he carries on pretending everything is fine for ordinary people across the country, they're going to be there for a very, very long time. And I remind him that we inherited absolute chaos from the party opposite. We lost an average of three million working days a year to strikes under his watch. And you cannot fix the economy if the trains don't work, and you can't fix the economy if the NHS isn't working. And when it comes to winter fuel payments, uh, they're having, well, they're having a competition as ads out. They're going to be voting later on today. Well, his shadow housing minister, we found this. She's the favourite, I think. Some of them will be probably voting for her this afternoon. She said, her words, I have people in my constituency telling me they don't need winter fuel payments. Why do we not have a more sophisticated mechanism for mean testing? That's their favourite, I think, in the contest that they are having. This is so nice. oh, Mr Speaker, again, the Prime Minister talked about the public finances. The UK's public finances are more robust than almost that of any other major advanced economy. Here we have it. He inherited a lower, a lower deficit a, a lower deficit than France, America, Italy... Or, 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 or. Well, I do point you to be quiet. I do mean it. I don't need a reaction back like that. Well, the UK currently has a lower deficit than France, America, Italy and Japan. It has the second lowest debt in the entire G7. And he opposed every difficult decision that we took to deliver that. So I certainly am not going to take any lectures from him on that score. But he, 
talked about protecting ordinary people. Well, last year, under the Conservative government, a low-income pensioner with just £13,000 received not only the winter fuel payment, but also hundreds of pounds of additional cost-of-living support, both of which he has now scrapped. Age UK have said cutting the winter fuel allowance is the wrong policy. And only this morning, we've learned that the vast majority of the poorest pensioners, pensioners in poverty, are going to see that vital support removed. So can he tell the House, very specifically to the pensioners that are watching, how much less support a pensioner on £13,000 will receive this winter? He talks about tough decisions. It's tough to inherit tough £22 billion black hole, which the OBR did not need. That is the inheritance. That's what they left. Now, back when they were in government, they'd have pretended it wasn't there. They'd have walked past it, put it in the long grass. We're not going to do that because we were elected to change this country for the better and stabilise our economy. No Prime Minister, no Prime Minister wants to do what we have to do in relation to the winter fuel allowance, but we have to take the tough decision to stabilise our economy to ensure that we can grow it for the future. And as I've said, we are working hard on pension credit. We're allowing housing benefits, which they didn't do for years, and over five years, it's a projected increase of up to £1,000 for those on pensions. We are tough decisions that they done. This is Sunak. The government doesn't have to choose to take money off low-income pensioners in order to give it to highly paid train drivers. That is a choice that he has made, and it will be clear to any pensioners watching that he simply can't explain why he has made that choice. But, Mr Speaker, turning to another important issue. The government has suspended 30 of the UK's 350 arms export licences to Israel. It's a decision that the Chief Rabbi says beggars belief and will encourage our shared enemies. Can the Prime Minister therefore explain how his decision will help to secure the release of the 101 hostages still being held by Hamas? Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, can I start by saying I think the whole House will be shocked by the horrific killing of six hostages in the last few days. And I know I speak for the whole House when I say that. The remaining hostages must be released and we need a ceasefire to ensure that that can happen, that aid desperately needed can get into the region, and we can begin the path to a two-state solution. Now, he asks how we arrived at this decision. He knows very well, because the legal framework is clear. The latest guidance was issued in 2021 under his government, and that means that licences have to be kept under review, as they were by his government. And I think he probably knows the advice that was given to his government. He understands the framework. We've carried out the review in the same way and come to a clear legal conclusion and shared that conclusion, the assessment, with Parliament. We will, of course, continue to stand by Israel's right to self-defence. But it is important that we are a country committed to the international rule of law. That gives us the strength of argument with our allies on important issues. Uh, This is a difficult issue, I recognise that, but it's a legal decision, not a policy decision. And the, the the, the Prime Minister knows the framework, and they shout, they issued the guidance, they know what the test is, that test has been assessed, we've come to a conclusion, and we've put that before the House to consider. Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I I appreciate the Prime Minister's answer, but he'll know that decisions like this also have important and broader geopolitical implications. And he mentioned allies. It's essential that we maintain transatlantic unity in the face of terrorist threats and avoid any perception of splits between our two nations. So can he therefore update the House or tell the House what engagement he had with the United States prior to taking this significant decision? Prime Minister. I I acknowledge the importance of working with our allies on all issues, as we have been doing, as I was able to make very clear 
uh, at the NATO summit that I attended uh, the, in the early summer. And of course, as he would expect, as the House would expect, uh, we have talked this through with our allies. They understand. They have a different legal. Si they have a different legal system. That is the point they made. He chunters from the. This is a serious issue. It requires serious consideration. And those. And the Prime Minister knows the legal framework. He knows the legal framework very well. He also knows that applying that framework. Uh, uh, the, the facts of that framework and arriving at a decision does not permit me to simply then say I'm not going to implement the legal decision and conclusion that's been reached. I don't think he's really inviting me to do that. Mr Speaker, not only do these decisions have geopolitical consequences, but they also have emotional ones too. And the Prime Minister took this action on the very same day as the funerals of Israeli hostages murdered by Hamas. It's something that the Board of Deputies described as a terrible, terrible message to be sending. And I hope the Prime Minister understands the hurt that has been caused, and can he take this opportunity to reassure Israel and the Jewish community that the United Kingdom and this House stands behind Israel and its right to self-defence? Prime Minister. Let me be very clear about that. I've said it before, I'll say it again. We absolutely recognise and support Israel's right to self-defence and have taken action uh, in support of that right of self-defence. I've made that repeatedly clear in all of my engagements with Israel across the region and with all of our allies. I absolutely stand by that. But in relation to licences, this isn't an Israel issue. It's the framework for all licences that have to be kept under review. It's the same test for all licences, as the Prime Minister knows. And having come, having applied uh, the law to the facts and come to a legal conclusion, I don't think the Prime Minister is really inviting me to put that to one side. We have to... Uh, uh, the Leader of the Opposition... This is, a, this is a serious issue. We either comply with international law or we don't. And we only have strength in our arguments because we comply with international law. I appreciate the party opposite didn't think that international law mattered. And that's why we 